everybody, Gina Mizell here alongside Danny Moran. We are at Autzen Stadium where in a wilder civil war than anybody expected, <laughs> Oregon State loses to Oregon 52 to 42, but again, this was a way closer game than anybody thought. Um, Oregon State was losing 31 to seven at the half, comes back, just uh, puts a huge scare into Oregon. This was a very interesting way to end a trying season for Oregon yeah. State. Just what are your initial reactions to this game? Um, going into the offseason, it's really just like what a last impression for mm -hmm. Oregon State to go out on. I mean, so much of the season went so much worse than expected with all the injuries, all the turmoil at the quarterback position, um, just being blown out a combined 137 to 31 the last three weeks. Yep. Um, and so to have a second half like this, um, even if it doesn't result in a win. I mean, I think ultimately once Oregon State starts to turn around, if it's next year, if it's an improvement next year, this could be seen as a turning point. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's crazy to think that in this type of game, they were 35 point underdogs that they would come out and lose only by 10 and were within three on a couple different occasions in the fourth quarter. Ryan Nall had a huge day, 174 yards rushing, including a 66 yard touchdown where he just ran through the middle of the defense, didn't know he had that kind of speed. And Victor Bolden, a big punt return for a touchdown. Marcus McMarion had a nice day getting hit his first start of his career, just a very good showing for the offense for the most part, which is something we haven't seen most of the season. Right, and I mean, you talk about the whole week not expecting this. I mean, at halftime, no one expected mm -mm. this. I mean, and, and the interesting thing was, I thought that Oregon wasn't playing that well. Mm -hmm. Oregon State scored a touchdown uh, on, their, on its own first drive for the first time in four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Oregon obviously got rolling, just, you know, they had superior athletes, superior talent, uh, oh. but you didn't get the sense that they were really clicking like they had been against USC or Stanford the previous weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so for you kind of a thought, okay, well, they'll get their stuff together in the second half and really roll Oregon State. And so, I mean, I think just the resilience that they showed, uh, you know, kind of leads to what a lot of the coaching staff was kind of talking about this whole year as far as, you know, finding building blocks and those guys kind of really putting it together. Obviously, Oregon State just didn't have enough depth or talent to pull out the win, but... Uh, it's you know, a good step going forward. Yeah, one other offensive weapon we need to talk about is the return of Seth Collins. Yeah. He played a bunch of different spots on the field, lined up at receiver, lined up at quarterback. He ran the ball, he threw the ball, almost caught a touchdown pass uh, from Marcus McMarion in the second half. Just uh, what did you make of his his addition to the offense because he was quite the versatile weapon out yeah, there? Yeah, he really helped. That's kind of what players talked about afterward. And I, I think ultimately it'll be interesting what his role is going forward. I kind of you know, brought that up to Gary Anderson after the game, and he said he'll be a part of the offense. So I think it was intentionally vague. Yeah. Um, obviously, Marcus McMarion, I talked to him too. He said he plans to be, you know, back next year competing for the starting job. Uh, Nick Mitchell's, of course, uh, you know, a retro freshman this year, so he'll be back. Um, and Daryl Gerritsen. And then Daryl Gerritsen's involved. Uh, Mason Moran's obviously committed as a, uh, you know, freshman, so maybe he retrips next year, maybe. You know, it's, it's really hard to tell, um, but I think that's what's intriguing about Seth Collins is that, you know, he can really fit into a number of places. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, Oregon State season, this was still a loss, ends in disappointing fashion. Overall, 2-10, no wins in conference play. But, man, like you said, this was quite the, the turnaround just compared to the last few weeks heading into the offseason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think when the line came out of the game at 30 points, a lot of people said, well, that's that's too close. Yeah. There's no way that Oregon State covers that. And, you know, it, it's just a, a good way for them to go out. I mean, obviously, it's a, a winless Pac-12 season, the first since 1997, which was Mike Riley's first year uh, in Corvallis. But uh, I, I think fans will probably be feeling a lot better going into the offseason, particularly when they had the past three weeks when really nothing had gone well on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Well, of course, the season is now officially over, but we will have all kinds of content in the Oregonian and on OregonLive.com the next few days, the next few weeks, and all throughout the offseason just to wrap this season up and then push us forward into 2016, which is already shaping up to be a very interesting year for Oregon State. So for Danny Moran, I am Gina Mizell. Again, final score. Oregon beats Oregon State 52-42. to 42. We are here at Austin Stadium, but we will catch you next time.